You can be seated. I trust you enjoyed the Christmas presentation so far. Especially that last song, Oh Holy Night. Do you know that there are actually people on the planet that live in the world today that don't appreciate that song very much? In fact, they think Oh Holy Night has been overplayed. Can you imagine that? In fact, can you imagine a Christmas without that song? I sure can't. Still my favorite. Always has been, always will be. Once again, good morning. It's so good to have you with us. Laura and the group will be back, uh, and we're going to close out our service together in just a few moments. But before we do that, as announced, we made the month of December and this Christmas all about our Waymaker. That's how the Bible describes God. That's how the Bible talks about him. And that's how the prophets portrayed him as the one who makes a way where there is no way. He creates a road in the desert. He builds rivers in the badlands. Remember that from a couple weeks ago? That's our God. And the Waymaker song that we love to worship, it describes God in four different ways. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. And with regard to God as the promise keeper, Psalm 145, 13 says, the Lord is trustworthy in all of his promises. He's faithful in all that he does. One more time. The Lord is trustworthy in all of his promises. He's faithful in all that he does. And the New Testament counterpart or equivalent to that very same truth is found in 2 Corinthians 1.20. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, All the promises of God are yes and amen. How many of the promises? All of his promises are yes and amen. In very simple terms, when God says something, it's going to come to pass. When God speaks it, you can take it to the bank because he always has the final word in everything. God has the final word. No one else, nothing else. And 700 years before Christmas, 700 years before that very first Christmas, God spoke to one of his top prophets, a holy man by the name of Isaiah. And through the lips of Isaiah, God said, I'm going to give my people a sign. It's going to be a supernatural sign. A little virgin girl is going to have a baby. That's right. A little virgin girl, without ever being with a man, is going to have a child. It's going to be a son. And when this little boy grows up to be a man, he's going to save his people from their sins. That's what God said. This miracle child is going to save his people from their sins. And when God said that, was he telling the truth? You better believe he was. Because the moment this little child was born, on that very first Christmas morning, an angel of the Lord appeared. And the angel said, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. How many people? Are you in awe? Everyone. Good news of great joy for everyone for me, for you, for every single person alive. The angel went on to say, for today in the city of David, a Savior has been born. A Savior has been born. He's Christ the Lord. And friend, that's what Christmas is all about. It's about salvation. The time that God came to planet Earth and he gave us the gift of salvation. 
That's the true meaning of Christmas. That's why we celebrate. That's why we go through everything that we do to put on beautiful services like this. And yes, we love the sights and sounds of Christmas. We absolutely adore the music and the magic, the Christmas carols and the cookies, especially the cookies. But make no mistake, on Christmas, our promise keeper God sent us a savior. And so the promise that God made 700 years ago came to pass. Because when God says it, it's a done deal. Amen. Now, unfortunately, not everyone is as trustworthy and dependable as God. And these days, people make and break promises like they're going out of style. I remember someone that I was close to. Someone I had a very intimate and personal and confidential relationship with years ago. They broke a promise that they made. In fact, they literally stabbed me in the back. And I was devastated. This was a trusted friend. Someone I admired and believed in. Someone that I deeply respected. And at first I was shocked. I thought there's no way in the world that this person could do this to me. After all that we've been through, after all that we had established and experienced together, and I was filled with so much hurt. And then that hurt turned to regret and then to anger. And even though I gave it to God a bunch of times and I tried to work through it, what followed was months and even years of heartache and emotional trauma. Has that ever happened to you? Ever feel like someone's abused you or betrayed you? Of course you have. We've all been on the receiving end of broken promises and shattered trust. This kind of thing goes on all the time in our broken world. Oftentimes at the hand of loved ones our family members and friends. And when that happens, the end result is devastating. And trust me when I tell you, I feel your pain. I know how real it is. And not for a second am I attempting to diminish or minimize the sting of betrayal. Again, I know how it feels. But I want to ask you a question. Have you ever broken a promise? Have you ever fallen short of keeping your own word? It's pretty quiet in here right now, so I would say that's probably a good indication that the answer to those questions is yes. And that if we were honest, we would all have to acknowledge and admit that on occasion, our own humanity has gotten the best of us. And even though we hate when that happens, and sometimes we wonder how in the world could we be so insensitive and unkind to other people, how I many you know we all miss the 100% trustworthy mark? No exceptions. And so in light of all that, I've got a Christmas 2021 proposal. Anyone care to hear it? I'll go ahead and give it anyway. <laughs> Since we've all been offended at one time or another, and by the same token, we have all caused or been responsible for offense, even if it's been unintentional, how about this Christmas, we choose to focus our attention on the one and only true promise keeper. And now I'm talking about Jesus, the one who Christmas is all about the one we come to celebrate. Again, by prophetic word and then fulfillment. He is our savior. And the prophetic word was that he came to save us from our sins. 
And how many of you know that in order for Jesus to make that happen, in order for him to take us off of the sin hook, he had to cut us some pretty serious slack. And he had to send some major mercy and grace our way. How about we do that this year? How about we try that? In our quest to celebrate Christmas at the highest possible level, I'm going to suggest that we take a page out of Jesus' book and we give people a break. I mean, ease up a little bit and cut them some slack, even the people we don't like very much. Because I promise you this, if we're willing to do that, when we choose to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and emulate his example, we stand a much better chance of not only offering forgiveness to the people that have hurt us, but finding forgiveness for those that we've offended. And if you ask me, that's a win-win for everyone. And so can I get you to just bow your heads for a moment? I'd like to pray a little prayer together. Could we do that? Could you repeat after me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being the ultimate promise keeper. For loving and accepting me even when I rejected you. Years ago, you told the prophets you would send your people a savior and you kept your word. Dear God, help me to keep mine. Where I have missed the mark and failed others, I pray they could find it in their hearts to extend mercy. And by the same token, I willingly forgive those who, who have wounded me. Father, thank you for providing the grace necessary to release and receive, to release and receive this powerful kind of freedom. Amen. Thank you so much for praying that prayer. I believe you prayed it from your heart. And as we've been talking about all month, I hope that something divine and supernatural has happened in our hearts so that we can truly celebrate Christmas the way it should be. All right, let's re-welcome Laura and the band back.